And so moving on, we've got, um, well, we should probably recap on Norman the Evasion. Is he one of the top picks? Top, he is the top pick okay. in the Super Screener. Um, absolutely uh, um, number one, and as you'll see in the wagering recommendations, very solidly in that one and the uh, second place slot. And a big price of 12 to 1 if he stays that high. That's what you got to love, because yeah. even if you get uh, other horses that are 8 or 9 to 1 in that you know, on the board, this is going to kick off a nice payment if uh, he's up to Absolutely. So now we're we'll talking about the morning line, so we'll move on to number 6 is my loot. Is 15 to 1. And uh, I happen to like my loot quite a bit, but Normandy Invasion at 12 to 1 and my loot at 15 to 1, that doesn't seem to quite make sense, does it? Right, right. I think uh, my loot's getting a lot of attention. Uh, certainly, it's been working out tremendously here in, in, in uh, Louisville, but also I think there's a, like Calvin Burrell, there's a big following for uh, Rosie yeah. in the Provence. She was just on 60 minutes. I don't think that hurt this horse's chances, and I think Mike Battaglia took that into consideration. <laughs> Uh, as the odds were being formed for this uh, horse, but uh, I was disappointed because I would have voted for more value. Maybe by the time the race comes around, yeah. won't, this one won't be 15 to one. Uh, you know, we were talking about this last night. I would pack him at about 22 to one, 24 to one. Um, it, it's just a very deep field at the top, right? You said, and so uh, sorry. So tell us about my loot. He was uh, one of the ones that kind of came through a lot of the criteria, right? Well, if you look at uh, the last two years, our Derby Dark Horse was went the day well last year. And that horse finished fourth at 30 to 1. Um, our Derby Dark Horse, our Super Speeder Dark Horse for the Derby of the year before was the Animal Kingdom, 21 right. to 1 on top. This year it's my loot. Wow. Um, and the reason for it, again, meets all the Super Speeder criteria. People say, ah, oh, this horse is sort of a, uh, it kind of gives up um, in the stretch. I think the blinkers exercise uh, going into the Louisiana Derby um, really moved this horse forward. If you look at that speed rating, it was a 95 to a 105. Um, a dramatic, almost uh, uh, just got disqualified, but he, he, he maintained just a 10 point move. 11 points and the, yeah. he gets a big knock. Um, but if you look at it, each of his six races, he's progressed forward. Um, and this horse, as, he, as the trainer said when you interviewed yeah. him yesterday, slow learner. He's, but he's learning he's each time because he's moving forward each time. And he's, he said he's really developing that killer instinct, you know, in the stretch. And, and uh, you know, I know uh, Revolutionary came back on him in the stretch, but in Louisiana Derby, but he was fighting every every inch of the way. So uh, it seems like he's really, look, really learning, putting it all together. And people think because of that Louisiana Derby, it's going to be a deep closer, and that's just not going to be the case. Uh, if you look at the rest of his races and the way he uh, is, where he is comfortable, he's going to be mid pack, and I think he gets first run on some of those deep closers. He also moves up in the mud, yeah. so um, I, I think that uh, only helps this horse's chances. And I think Rosie, uh, uh, she does quite well on this track and knows this horse well as she. Uh, Rode this one to its most dominating victory with a 10 length, uh, take a 10 length win. All right, well, interesting horse. All right. So, uh, moving on, we've got number seven, Giant Finish, at 50 to 1. In 30 seconds or less, tell us what you can say about <laughs> Giant Finish. There are always horses that uh, owners get derby fever. The trainer didn't even show up for this one. Um, so, that tells you a little bit of a little something. Uh, completely and hopelessly overmanaged. Fair enough. Uh, a potential pace factor a little bit? Yes, that helps. You know, at least uh, a little contributor to the pace. And you know, he is, the only chance he's got to, is to send him, right. give the owners a thrill to see him maybe in the lead uh, at the turn or something, and that's going to be about it. Okay. So, candidate, so, he is the candidate to finish last place in the. In the uh, so, as far as pace, we've got Oxbow going from the two, he's in the seven, we'll go a little bit, and then we move on to the eight horse, which is Golden Sense at five to one. Five to one, eh, like a little bit higher. He might float up a bit, yeah, I think, uh, so. of, of these horses. Maybe more like eight to one, nine to one. Uh, California horses, for whatever reason, uh, year after year here, do not get, um, I guess, their fair shake. And last year, keep in mind that uh, out of the top five finishers, three were from California. That was a little different year last year. A lot of quality came out of California. Uh, but people weren't thinking that because you know odds on those horses were, except for Bodemeister, were pretty high. So. Um, Golden Sense, if you look at the running lines, they are very similar to Bodie Meister's um, in, in his last two races, in fact. Um, this horse has just knockout speed. Uh, the pace figures are not only um, uh, supported by um, strong late pace figures, but those first call and second call numbers are, are extraordinary and meet the, um, the pace criteria. Not too many pace horses win the Derby. Last one was War Emblem, really, and before that uh, we had a little, con I think, winning colors. So it's been a long time in between um, Derbies when you have a pace horse that wins it. Track is going to be very key. Mm -hmm. Does move up in the slot. 
if it's favoring speed, watch out because he's got, yeah. he's got the breakaway goodness. He can sit probably second like they've trained him, unless he gets a little uh, yeah. back into his head and, and just right. starts going. You know, Mike, when I looked at this horse, I think Golden Sense plays a big part in the way the race is run, and, and I think the middle of the race is his. You know, he may sit back a, a, a little bit in the start, not to get so involved in the pace if he can, if Kevin can, but I think the middle of the race where his, you know, that kind of middle pace that he's got all down the back stretch or when he decides to go, you know, potentially does he take the lead into the quarter pole and, and quite formidably, maybe a little bit like Bodemeister, not quite as breakaway, but does yeah. that sound right? It, it, it fits the picture extremely well because uh, none of the other pace or pressers come even close to the types of figures this horse is capable right. of reeling off. And again, if those are can be managed, right. then he's got a lot of energy left in the tank and he can have one of those uh, bursts. Yeah. Uh, and I would imagine it would be around the quarter pole. Well, you know, and I think what I'm thinking, you know, even on the back side at, at some point, or maybe it's going into the far turn, that if he puts a burst in, and, uh, you know, because if he's tracking Optimo and Giant Finch, he could probably go by them when he wants to. Right. And so I thought the interesting thing here is, does he really force the hand a little bit of, you know, a horse like Verrazano or a horse like Orb, that they're sitting there tracking in fifth or sixth or seventh, they see Golden Sense going on with it, and it's time to go. Yeah. You don't want to get left in the dust. And so it just seems like that the middle of the race could really come in key with this horse. I think the mid-pace race in the Derby will be the, the, the fastest in terms of relative, relatively speaking for that part of the race. I think that'll be when they're running the fastest. Okay. And so he's met all the criteria, right, for some trainer? And he's met all the criteria. He is number two behind Normandy Invasion. And with a race that's coming up on what I'd call not your most stellar pressers and pace horses, um, he's a standout among that group. Therefore, he has a lot of control over how that first part of the race goes. Yeah, and, and not to beat up the Bodemeister example, but like you said, it's difficult for pace horses to win the Derby. Uh, we've seen Shackleford ran fourth, Bodemeister ran second. Other Art Spawn ran second, yeah. So it, it seems like, is that a big possibility here? Well, you'll see in the wagering, you know, we, we do certainly have him on top, but he's much more centered in the second and the three hole, um, only because uh, typically there'll be some presser or base horse that will end up in the top four. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I had to pick a candidate that would finish in the top four that are in that category, it's Golden Sense. Okay. There we go. All right, so moving on, number nine, anal an overanalyzed. Maybe that's what we just did. 15 to 1. <laughs> I've overanalyzed this horse, too, I think. Yeah. Um, I, you know, um, it's interesting because um, there was a little clue lately where I kind of backed off this horse a little bit. Um, the, the Palace Malice uh, had gone out with this horse in the most recent work. And uh, between the two, uh, it was clear that Palace Malice uh, seemed to have uh, the better going. Um, and that overanalyze was even doing that kind of that bob up and down. Didn't seem all that comfortable um, on the track. Wasn't horrible, but wasn't uh, super comfortable. And it seems like he's that sneaky Pletcher bomber that can show up like Bluegrass Cat or Invisible Ink that hits that board that nobody talks about right. um, when he has multiple horses. This one is not one of those horses. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say that again. No. And Churchill Down Surface, uh, that Iroquois, you know, I yeah. thought, man, it's not like he excelled on that surface. All right. So don't, don't be too concerned about overanalyze. But now the we get to number 10, Palace Malice. Ah, yeah. 20 to 1 Pletcher. Of those two, I'd have to say Revolutionary is number one in his barn right now uh, for sure. But Palace Malice is moving up strong. The addition really? of Blinkers, uh, which he'll wear in the Derby, um, has been a, it looks like a good addition. He's a mid pack runner. Um, so again, he'll uh, take the advantage of getting first run. Uh, he can run all day long. He's had also some horrible trips. Uh, including the, um, the the Louisiana Derby, um, I like that Goes, Gomez jumps off to ride uh, or, you know, to, to ride by Jake, But you get you know the the calm, cool, collected Mike Smith. Yeah. Um, I, I do like that for this type of horse that requires probably more patience. Okay. Um, and uh, while he's missed some super screener criteria, he's moving up. He's very sneaky. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know his races are a little interesting. In that he had so much trouble in the Risen Star, and in the Bluegrass, you know he ran a good race, but it seemed like. He just wasn't really handling the track that well, and so, you know, that was poly track. So now we're back on dirt, and maybe we haven't seen the best of him this year. And yeah. That, that's, that does make him interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I think he's another one, again, where if you're playing the Super, uh, he's a nice fourth place horse. Okay. At, at much better odds than you're going to get here. Uh, yeah. He'll be better at least 21. Yeah, I think we're going to get 35 in one of Palace Mouse. So, uh, 
Okay, so now we go on to the Dubai Invader, number 11, lines of battle at 30 to 1. Moves up a bit sloppy. I think certainly his breeding would, would help him there. Um, I don't know if many people know this, but they are sending this horse. He is a, uh, he is a, he's going to be on the pace, um, but it's going to be the American version of pace, <laughs> which obviously a lot of uh, European horses are, are not accustomed to, especially on the dirt. Right. Um, there was even a question about running this horse in an upcoming um, turf race in England. Uh, so there wasn't even a, you know, a certainty about making this trip. They did. Um, but this is another one where, you know, it's had one race uh, since, I forgot, it was definitely uh, been many, many months. Um, so I, I think he's a toss. So you're a derby, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Eventually one of these will beat us, but I don't think, gonna it's, I don't think it's going to be this one. Okay, all right. So let's move on. So number 12, we've got It's My Lucky Day, 15 to 1. And here's another one. We talked to the trainer, uh, Eddie Police, this morning, and gosh, this guy was confident. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't know Eddie Plisa. I've been betting, you know, for a while, and I think he's a pretty, pretty good trainer. But wow, the guy was really confident. He talked about how he engineered the 62-day layoff to get to the Derby, uh, and he said it was the right thing for this horse. And so, uh, found that really interesting. You know, it is pretty unorthodox to, to train that way. Yeah, yeah, it was very interesting, and um, and he's an unorthodox horse. I think we saw that at, yeah. at Golf Street Park. Uh, my wife says, why do you keep tossing and turning every night? And then you keep saying, it's my lucky day, it's my lucky day. <laughs> and i got to tell you, this one's given me all kinds of fits because the super screener, much like uh, we, in, the, in the Breeders' Cup, for example, Turbulent Descent uh, violated three major uh, super screener criteria for that uh, uh, race, that sprint race. And it was hard to take a big stand against that horse. Mm -hmm. um, and the horse finished fifth. Uh, this, it's my lucky day, has some of that same feel and look violates three very critical time-tested criteria, one of which is three descending speed ratings, you know, that 111, 106, 92, or, 90, or 94. 94. Um, and those are pretty big drops, very steep, going from race to race. Now, it's fortunate that the trainer did give them the proper rest, because when you hit those big tops, obviously that's very key. But it's not necessarily the way to come into the Derby. It looks good for the Preakness. Um, but I don't think this is the way to come into the Derby. The other violator is big 10-point spread. He went from that, you know, yeah. that 106 and the, and the Holy Bull down to the 94. And the other is um, there haven't been any horses who have raced in um, March. Their last race was in March and didn't have a race in February. So a lot of time, again, another horse with 100 days and only has the one race. I just don't think he's going to be lightning fit. I wouldn't leave him off the bottom of the tickets. You know, I yeah. he's a mid-packer for sure. Uh, based on the quality of the rest of the field, but um, I know he's been training real well here. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one, I'm. I wouldn't blame anybody for going against the super screener here, but this will be a real test of those three criteria. And I think this is another one where I kind of think the middle of the race is key because uh, if it's my lucky days right there, fourth or whoever he is, and he starts to make that move, he's going to say, you know, welcome, you know, meet Golden Sense. Golden Sense, meet. It's my lucky day, and, and I think if those two really tear it up, um, it could get a little bit faster. Then, uh, you know, they're, they're both very good horses, and uh, you know, one of them may run the other one, you know, out of the race. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right, now we got uh, a little easier one. Number thirteen is <laughs> Falling Sky at fifty to one. I know that traditionally the morning line the maker doesn't go higher. I think I'll predict that this horse going over a hundred to one. But. Yep. I think we'll be close to that, like 90, 100 to 1, something like that. Okay. Uh, competes for giant, with giant finish for the last place finish. Um, so if you have a throwdown bet with somebody, uh, this is a good head-to-head uh, -head, uh, wager. I think um, he'll be, again, pace factor uh, along with giant finish. So it, it, it does help support a little bit more of a pace, but no need to spend any more time on it. Well, I just did want to say, for a pace, from a pace standpoint, his only chance probably is to go. He's in the 13 hole. He's outside of a couple of the other speed, so that could help a little bit more. Trainers um, committed to that as well, so okay. I'm going on record is so. they're going. So, all right. So now we brings us to number 14, Verrazano, four to one. Yeah, I get no respect. No respect. Uh, this undefeated. one, this one is uh, undefeated. Uh, has four races, undefeated. Uh, really has been kind of uh, uh, poo pooed by uh, the pros. And uh, certainly has done nothing wrong, um, and certainly deserved favoritism if that's where it ends up. Doesn't appear to be, um, but you know, again, there's a couple of concerns here. He is a presser type, and there are very strict presser uh, kind of pace and speed rules, and he misses on those. Um, so he's not um, literally at the top of the class on the presser in the within the presser pool. Um, 
he has those tough to overcome thresholds too, where his his numbers have decreased mm -hmm. as he's gone up in distance. His margins have decreased. Now again, uh, he could be any kind. Uh, you know, it, it's very difficult to tell from the.